So when universities are changing what they take respect to consist in, from respect for people's ability to think to, for themselves, to um, respect for their concern for their own identity, for their own feelings, well then the university loses its mission as an academic institution. In a thought-provoking new book, my guest today proposes, universities done right are integral to our way of life in open societies. They provide a needed antidote to the diversity, inclusion, and equity virus that is turning the true university mission on its head. Yes, it's gonna be a loaded discussion. Currently a professor of philosophy at St. Mary's in Halifax, Mark Mercer is a prolific academic who isn't scared to tell the truth. And I can't wait to hear about his book, In Praise of Dangerous University. Today, a special episode of Return to Reason, where knowledge and wisdom intersect. Well, Mark, it is so good to have you on Return to Reason. Thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Jeremy. First of all, did you ever see yourself like writing a book like this? And for those of our viewers who don't know, it's um, In Praise of Dangerous Universities. Go ahead and tell me about that. How did you arrive at this book and the title as well? The um, idea of safe spaces and uh, safe universities was mm -hmm. in the air. Uh, and the, the idea of a safe, uh, a safe space, or uh, uh, generally a safe university, the idea of a safe space is one where aspects of your identity don't come up for question, right? Um, and you sometimes hear um, uh, phrases like, um, uh, you're denying my existence, something like that, when talking about um, um, some uh, beliefs of uh, one's identity or, or, or aspects of one's, one's feeling. But that's entirely the wrong way to think about a university. Uh, at, a, at a university, it's a, it's a difficult thing to do, but um, key to study is taking aspects of your identity and, and holding them at arm's length and actually alienating yourself from them. And that can be dangerous. Uh, Which is so contrary to what we're hearing. Everybody seems to be embracing it and amplifying it and putting it on a pedestal. Well, that's, that's right. And this is why I thought, well, what we want is a dangerous university, a university where you are at risk of um, hearing critical ideas, critical yeah. responses to your ideas, even ideas that matter to you, aspects of um, your identity, aspects of who you, who you think you are. Um, so at, at a university, the, um, the, one of the tasks is to look critically at aspects of ourselves, aspects of ourselves that mean a lot to us. And uh, uh, so I thought um, I should praise dangerous universities. <laughs> I think that's actually quite a, quite a brilliant name, actually. To the viewers who don't see the problem, what, what's the problem that we're combating here? Like, I know you said, I like how you said we need dangerous universities, which I would imagine is free thought, free thinking, the pursuit of truth, allowing us to be free thinkers, which alludes to a free country. But it seems to be like, is it freedom that's at, like, what's the problem? Is freedom at risk? What are we trying to fight? I, th I think there are many, many things at risk. And I don't think they all come down to the same thing, but I, I do think there's one, um, one very important, one major thing, I don't want to collapse everything into it, um, but um, the idea of intellectual and moral autonomy. Uh, to be intellectually auto into autonomous is to think for oneself. Um, that is to hold one's beliefs on the basis of evidence and the reasons, the arguments that, that one has in favor of them. Now, this is not something that humans are particularly good at. We're not built for it. Uh, we, we tend to believe what comforts us, what um, uh, the people we admire believe. Uh, if you want to fit in with people, I mean, the best, and, and everyone wants to fit in with people they admire, uh, one of the best ways to do it is to uh, um, be to like them friend. in what they believe and in yeah. what they and what they feel. So the, um, the institution of... Um, of the university as a place where people who prize their intellectual and moral autonomy come together to think about things. Um, I think this is one of the, the, the great inventions uh, in the world. Much else has, uh, has, has followed from it, but it's always in danger. It's always in danger of um, um, coming back into something more like uh, finding the key ideas of the tribe and then keeping them uh, uh, safe and, and sacred and, and, and central. So I think the idea of um, uh, intellectual autonomy, being able to think for oneself, and moral autonomy, being able to hold one's values for one's own on one's own grounds, being aware of what one values and being aware of 
why one values and having a sense of um, how the different things that one values um, uh, can cohere and can occasionally contrast with each other, conflict with each other. Yeah. Um, that idea, I think, is being replaced in universities. Hmm. So if you think of the concept of respect, um, the, the term respect means a lot of things. So it can mean admiration, it can mean esteem. Um, but in, in, in um, one sense, we respect people when we respect their ability to think for themselves and their ability to value for themselves. Yeah. Now, if, if, we, if, if we respect their ability to think for themselves and value for themselves, we're not going to manipulate them into our values. Even if we yeah. think our values are noble, even if we're not doing it selfishly, if we're, we're doing it selflessly, um, we're still going to be um, honest, candid, uh, non-manipulative uh, with people. But um, there's a new sense of respect, and it's the sense of respect that's becoming, um, that's being embodied in university doc documents, uh, in university policies. And this is the idea of respect for identity, respect for feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see that the two have very little to do with each other, because if you're respecting someone's intellectual autonomy, respecting someone's ability to think for themselves, you're going to speak to them what may in fact be hard truths yes. yeah, to them. But if you're respecting their identity, you're respecting their feelings, you're, uh, the idea of candor then becomes um, uh, disrespectful. Yes. Uh, actually, to speak openly and honestly with people about things that you think matter to the two of you um, can be criticized as disrespectful. So when universities are changing what they take respect to consist in from respect for people's ability to think to, for themselves to um, respect for their concern for their own identity, for their own feelings, well, then the university loses its mission as an academic institution. So I think that's one of the ideas central to what I've been writing about. You know, one mm -hmm. of the things that um, you touch on a lot is equity, diversity, and inclusion. Yes. Um, I, before we jump in, can you define it? Can you explain, okay, what is equity? What is diversity? What's inclusion? What, where do these fit in? Is this being taught? Can you go ahead and unpack that for me a little bit? Yeah, uh, th these, these are terms I refer to, but I, I don't use them myself. The terms I mentioned, because these are the, the terms that um, uh, uh, people who conceive the university very differently than I yeah. do are using. But I take it that, that in their view, um, Equity comes to something like um, treating individuals as members of groups and mm -hmm. trying to see that uh, the university or at, at different aspects of the university mirror certain demographic uh, factors in the, um, in the general population. Uh, it might be um, um, uh, racial demography or um, uh, sex demography or um, even sexual preference uh, demography. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, if uh, uh, gay men make up 8% uh, of the population, then 8% of your um, faculty uh, should be yeah. gay. Um, or um, if it's the case that there's some um, uh, topics or, or, or methods of instruction that tend to appeal more to women than to men, mm -hmm. even though, of course, there's going to be great overlap. And, you know, it's just it's sort of, uh, uh, there'll be more women at the one end who prefer this, uh, uh, this method of teaching. Um, then uh, you should have, you know, uh, that many faculty members who are, uh, pr who prefer that method yes. or, or, or who prefer that topic. So you're, essentially you were saying if there's 8% that are uh, represented in our population, it should proportionally be 8% and everywhere else as well. Yeah. But you're saying mm -hmm. it's forced where they sometimes actually scale up those percentages in certain organizations because of uh, equal outcome. They're choosing for it to be proportionally the, yes, the, the, They're choosing to be more representative, yes, right? Yes. So, okay. um, and I think um, the, the idea of di uh, disparate impact uh, from Heather McDonald, I think is uh, uh, a, a good explanation here, yeah. right? The justification is uh, well, if you take any institution in society, then that institution would reflect the demographics of the general population, yeah, yeah. except that um, there have been um, laws or standards or tests or whatever that have a disparate impact on uh, members of, of, of certain groups, of, of yeah. certain um, uh, 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 demographic uh, groups. Now, um, you know, I, I think that argument is just terrible. Yeah. 
Um, but but the, the, the problem with, with, with equity, uh, that there are two problems with um, universities pursuing equity in you know, as understood that way. And I think this is the way that the people who, um, who, who uh, promote equity understand it. Um, the first is that it says that what we're doing at the university, the experience we're trying to give our students, the research we're trying to do um, is, is just, um, uh, it's, it, it takes second place to something else. Yeah. So we're saying that um, academic values um, are secondary to these political or social goals, whatever they happen to be. Wow. So that even if, um, you know, everything is fine academically, uh, still uh, the academics have to be changed in order to accommodate, uh, in order to accommodate e equity. And I've heard uh, of this, this even at the grade school level where they actually say there's no ability for, to fail. Mm. Like, so it's, so it's kind of, ah, everybody made it. Well, uh, but when you when you expand that over years and years, that's a scary thing that is being, I guess, brought into society where there's ah, I, I always win, I always grow, and they said I am. Well, it's like, mm -hmm. well, no, you don't, you you aren't hitting the marks that are required for you to step into the next phase, and that's okay yeah. if you know it. So it seems mm -hmm. to be permeating not only universities mm -hmm. but schools all around, and and not just schools, even our society. Mm -hmm. Well, any any organization, any any. Um group of people that's, that's that's attempting to do something mm -hmm. when they let the concept of excellence fall by the wayside then they're yeah. saying they're not really serious about what they're doing Absolutely. um so this is a, a university that's not serious about being a university why is it not serious about being a university because it cares about something else more than wow. it cares about its function <laughs> wow. uh, which is to promote well excellence in uh, in scholarship excellence in research Yep. The, the second thing about um, equity that's a problem academically is that it's coming from on high, right? It doesn't, yep. it's, it's, it's imposed upon uh, faculties and departments, um, even imposed upon individual professors if they're asked to bring, say, more women authors into, the, um, into their syllabi. Yeah. Um, more um, authors from uh, the global south or um, uh, more contemporary rather than um, uh, uh, dead people, um, whatever. If those pressures are not um, academic pressures, if they're not coming from the needs to understand the topic, yeah. uh, then one saying that the topic is second rate, there's something yeah. that matters more. Yeah. Um, and there's no way that a group of people uh, doing something can't be demoralized yeah, yes, if they're yeah. told that what they're doing isn't really all that important. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, I can't even I can't even imagine. It, it's as though we're playing like nobody was going to go to, a, as, as I said, I like hockey where they don't show you the score and no one keeps track. It's the, the, the very fact that one's winning and one's losing and another one needs to is the <laughs> what's driving the entertainment value and the. The uphill battle for the underdog and uh um it's just why i watch it's why it's entertaining yeah. it's why it's the struggle you know the next thing i want to get you to unpack is diversity mm -hmm. um uh, what does that mean and what, what's what's it all about well the thought is that um people because of certain aspects of their identity perhaps uh, racial or sexual uh um ethnic mm -hmm. have uh, different ways of of looking at the world yeah uh, and so if we bring in um, lots of different ways of, of looking at things and conceiving of things, we'll have a, a richer uh, university experience. Yeah. Now, um, I, think, I think that's absolutely right if we're talking about diversity of approaches, diversity of, uh, diversity of ideas, um, yeah. diversity of, uh, of, of methodologies, uh, styles, uh, bring them in and, and let them fight. But the, the way to do that is to look at the accomplishments of the scholars, uh, to look at their um, dossier, to read their papers. Um, you don't get that by looking at their skin color. Yes, yes. Right. Um, and one might say, well, skin color is just a proxy um, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, because of their skin color, they'll have different experiences. And I say, well, even if that's true, yeah. um, the way to find scholars who are doing things differently than the scholars are already on board is to look at their dossiers. Yeah. Uh, so the diversity uh, mandates are often um, uh, preferential hiring or sometimes even restricted hiring. 
where um, a new professor is, uh, is to be hired by a department and the department won't look at anyone except who has a particular skin color, let's say, or an ethnicity or um, Which identity of some sort. Like, that alone is in, in my, I'm not trying to be sensational. That's terrifying to me because even as Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau chose his cabinet, um, he chose it that way where he wanted a certain percentage of female and male and, and any, whatever his, I don't know what his criteria were. Mm -hmm. But what that is, is merely saying for those who maybe don't get what it is we're talking about is you're, you're saying there probably could be a, a more qualified person that is no longer brought to the table because they don't fit the diversity right. quota. Um, mm -hmm. And those are the people leading our country. Like it, it, it's not to be taken lightly. And that's why I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you've written this book. I'm glad we're continuing to talk this through because this is important. Like this is huge. Yeah. Now, you know, for me, um, in, in the book and, and um, my work, uh, I'm talking about it in the context of education. I want Absolutely. I always, sorry, I always try to talk about it in our country because oh, I just no, think no. they're always tied. And, and yeah. I, I appreciate the uh, clarity. No, I'm, 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 I'm happy to talk about it more, more generally. <laughs> but the, the, the idea of selecting people on the basis of their skin color or their sex is absolutely yeah. repellent, absolutely yes. abhorrent. I, and, and, it, it um, it's depressing. It pains me to no end yeah. that, that, that we're seeing that, but my specific yes, yes. <laughs> criticism, my specific uh, critiques um, aren't that uh, yeah. it, it's about the quality of the university. Yeah. And so as, as you said, if uh, there's, uh, there's, you can't create an excellent uh, professoriate yeah. unless you're looking at everyone who's qualified. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And if, if, if you say, um, well, uh, we're, we're going to look only at a subset. So that's of, happening of in the those university? Who are oh, when they're choosing yes, prof profs, they're not looking at the whole. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Um, preferential right. hiring is, is fairly common. And Restricted is that like hiring is becoming even more common. It is, is becoming common really? as well. And is that common knowledge or is that just insider university? Oh, no, like... it's, it's, it's common knowledge. And um, wow. we've been trying to make it public knowledge as well, hmm. but the newspapers don't seem to be interested. Wow. Yeah, yeah. When, when we write letters to universities, uh, to university presidents um, or um, uh, uh, deans or, or vice presidents about um, preferential hiring or restricted hiring, or you know any of the other things that we think are um, uh, anti-academic that go against academic values, we yeah. often bring it, uh, uh, copy our letters to uh, to newspapers and sometimes to politicians, yeah. and uh, there doesn't seem to be much interest wow. in this at all, uh, which is uh, uh, surprising uh, to me. Um, yeah. Surprising, just first of all, because it's discriminatory, but then secondly, because um, it's a, 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 an institution saying that excellence doesn't matter to it. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. so this is, um, uh, this is diversity. Now, um, th there very well might be some correlation that the sociologists can point to between say skin color and new ideas. Yes. Even if that's true, you go to the dossier and you look for the new ideas. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's where it is. So it, it may well happen uh, yeah. that, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the top scholars, because they're doing interesting things, happen uh, to be um, um, uh, different in, in ethnicity or race or whatever than the majority uh, professors. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you, you, would, you would find that out by looking at, um, at, their, uh, at the dossier. Yeah. Now, one, uh, one problem here uh, is also the lack of trust shown to faculty members um, because typically um, people are hot new professors are hired uh, by the by departments the department says oh we, we have an opening uh, we're looking for someone in this area of this field um, and then the professors in that department um, take the dossiers look them through invite three to five people to camp campus have an interview and and, and select it but now word is coming on uh, coming down from on high um, instructing uh, the professors about um, what fields or you know the racial background or, or whatever and this is as much to say uh, to the professors that unless we um, uh, uh, tie you guys up in a certain way you're not going to act right you know that um, your your racial prejudice will uh, uh, rule yeah. uh, and you know it's to, it, really to call the members of the hiring committee um, uh, 
unconscious racist or have an unconscious bias and that needs yeah. to be filtered out by making sure that the applicant pool isn't as large as, as it could be. I've heard a phrase called reverse racism. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. yeah. Where in the name of trying not to be racist, they're actually generally being ex excluding a race, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which, which, which seems to be happening. And so this is extremely eye-opening because I've never even heard of it from this angle about it happening at the hiring of profs where that's the first line of communication to the students, mm -hmm. which then ultimately, as, as I'm very passionate about the country, it, and, and as, are, as are you, but I just mean that's the first step to happen as these leaders continue to come into our world. And I also find it interesting the, the words they're using in this acronym, equity, diversity, inclusion. On the surface level, they're great. On the surface level, they're, yeah. um, they have, oh, who doesn't want diversity? Who doesn't want inclusion? And so the last <laughs> one I want to ask you before, I have a few things to ask you, is about inclusion. Okay. Um, what, what's that and what's going on there? Well, um, again, uh, along with uh, equity and, and diversity, inclusion, uh, the idea is that everyone has a seat at the table or all the ideas have a seat at the table. Now, the problem from an academic point of view is that um, what we want is a contest of ideas. We want yeah. the ideas to be um, uh, to be present, but then to yeah. be criticized. Now, uh, that can go against inclusion because yeah. inclusion means, well, if you're attacking an idea, then you're not including it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So uh, I have uh, nothing against bringing astrology yeah. into uh, the discussion, um, uh, bringing any idea into the discussion, but uh, let, it be, uh, <laughs> let it be criticized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if, it, if it talks back and uh, uh, wins some, uh, some minds, well, that's great. It gets to uh, participate um, longer. So we might see this with the move to indigenize the university, where, um, say, indigenous ways of knowing or um, indigenous lore about uh, botany or, um, or um, uh, uh, ecology, animal life uh, brought into, uh, in into science classes. Well, sure, why not? Uh, but investigate it, hold it to uh, uh, high standards, yeah. uh, let it uh, fight with uh, other ways of investigating things. Yeah. Uh, but then that would be considered disrespectful uh, to Indigenous people. And of course, that, that, that is so much to infanticide, uh, infanticize people, uh, to make them uh, uh, childish. Um, yeah, or wow. to, to, to hold them as uh, as children but you know let let, let these things um, uh, be discussed um, cool. and then and, and let them be discussed critically yeah, but absolutely. inclusion seems to be uh, turn the university from a place where uh, ideas where we have the conflict of ideas to a place where the ideas are on display more like yes, a museum yeah. so you yeah, you, know, yeah. you move from the one exhibition to the other exhibition and and um, uh, they're not uh, uh, competing with each other uh, but yeah. that's an entirely different view oh, of oh. the university it's not an academic university well absolutely and um, you're you're actually a member of the society of academic freedom of and scholarship um, tell me about that tell me why is it your member what's their goals what are they what are they trying to do well i've been a member um, for well, maybe not quite 20 years, maybe 17 years or so, uh, there were some um, um, things happening at my university and the Society for Academic Freedom and Scholarship was the only one, the only organization of academics that uh, uh, was uh, saying the right things, I thought, at the time. And so I learned a bit about them. I started writing for them. The president at the time was, uh, was great to me. He gave me uh, lots of space in the newsletter. And so I was uh, uh, writing a lot and um, uh, uh, came into the society. Well, the society has, it, it wants to promote uh, academic freedom, yeah. uh, freedom of expression on campus. Uh, so we include students. We're very, uh, very concerned about um, uh, students at universities yeah. and uh, academic excellence um, yeah. and the um, uh, attempting to um, counter the use of uh, the classroom and use of teaching as um, ideological indoctrination or, or you know telling people what to think rather than yeah. helping them to uh, to think uh, to think for themselves yeah. Yeah. So that's what that organization is about well, that's and that's excellent. Um, in the last few minutes, we have. Um, wh what are your thoughts? Where do you think we're at? Is the are the university sick? Does it have cancer? Is it terminal? Like where, <laughs> where where are we at with this? Do you think it's repairable? 
Um, like as I was alluding to at the beginning, I, I think you're fighting a valiant fight, which is why I said the word warrior is because um, you care, you you obviously value it, so you're caring for it and you're bringing mm-hmm. dialogue to it, which is why we do the show. It's why we want to return people to reason. Is we want to talk, we want free thinking. And so, where do you think the universities are in this? Where are they? I think universities are in a very bad place. I don't think wow. they're, they're they're doing well. The um, the university administrators are chosen now for their allegiance to uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Whether they're honest about it or not, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, many um, academic advi- um, administrators just like to be administrators, and so they, yes. they, they follow the wind. But there are a lot of um, uh, true believers among them, and they're, the um, politically active professors are politically active on the side of diversity, inclusion, and yeah. equity. Um, other professors, the uh, more academically minded uh, professors, they just want to do their teaching and do their research. And um, uh, they're, going, they're getting older and they're going to retire and they're going to be replaced by um, professors who have been chosen for their adherence to um, equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, ideology and, 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 and doctrine. Wow. So uh, I think this is a generational right. thing. I think we've got maybe two generations uh, before the, before the universities um, you know, might come back uh, to, to academics. So this has happened in history before, you know, the university, yeah, the, the pendulum swinging. Yeah. Yeah, thousands of years old. Uh, well, yep. thousand five hundred years old, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the university has been around for a long time, and things have changed in universities and then changed back. So um, it might change back again. But yeah. the idea of an academic university is not one that uh, 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 appeals to ac- academic administrators uh, in power uh, today. Yeah. Um, so uh, what we can do. I think is uh, one of the important things to do is is to try to articulate what an academic university is and try to um, articulate the academic values and and the the social purposes that such a university would have just to keep these ideas alive so that they don't have to be reinvented entirely. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other thing we can do is try in our own classrooms to be the um, academic professors that, uh, uh, that, that we want to be. Yeah. That might mean that we have to um, hide ourselves uh, a little. Um, yeah. You know, Absolutely. one misplaced student complaint uh, can cause a lot of trouble. Oh. So you have to be worried about that. Well, yeah, and you're, walk- you're walking on eggshells. Meanwhile, you're trying to push free thinking in, in a society that um, doesn't necessarily encourage that. You know, I, um, I want to say thank you, Mark, for, for joining us today. There's so much more I'd love to just continue to unpack. We're, we're out of time. But I want to encourage our viewers, if you, um, if you want to get his book, it's In Praise of Dangerous Universities, and we'll put it up on the screen here. Um, to, I just love that thought, In Praise of Dangerous Universities, and uh, allowing the next generation to learn and to be free thinking. And uh, again, thank you for what I call fighting the good fight. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Mark. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy. I've enjoyed myself. You are an essential part of this series. Support truth, knowledge, and wisdom by sharing this show with a friend. Visit returntoreason.tv. There, you can subscribe to our newsletter by clicking Become an Insider. Get the latest articles, episodes, and exclusive content. It's Return to Reason.